So building a gaming PC is pretty straightforward and most definitely an enjoyable experience. So in today's video I'm going to take you through the steps to build yourself a high-end gaming PC that will give you all the frames you need to play the latest and greatest titles. What is up guys, I hope everyone is doing well. Just before we go ahead and jump into the PC build, I want to let you guys know that you don't have to use all the exact parts that I am using as the build guide can be followed to use your specific parts that meet your budget. So just to let you know. So with that said guys, let's go ahead and jump into this. So the first step I always take is to install the CPU. We do this by simply opening the latch on the motherboard, then set your CPU down in this socket. Just make sure you match the triangle on the CPU to the triangle on the motherboard and you will be absolutely fine. When seated, simply close the latch back over and the top will pop off and put that back in your box for safekeeping. Next up we are installing our M.2 drive. If you want to skip this step and just use an SSD, then that's no problem at all. To install the M.2, we simply have to remove the M.2 shield on the motherboard and this is done by taking these two screws out. Next, go ahead and grab your M.2 drive. Take note of the notch on the drive itself and simply line it up with the notch on the slot and push it into place. Before we place the shield back on, we can remove this protective film from the heat pad and put it back in place the exact same way we removed it. Now it's time to go ahead and install our Corsair Vengeance Pro RGB RAM. First of all, open up the RAM slots on the motherboard, then take note of the notch on the DIMM and match it to the notch on the slot and just push it firmly into place until it clicks in nice and secure. It is a little daunting at first but if lined up properly you will have no problems. Ok so now we're going to go ahead and swap out the fans in this case. This is definitely a step that you don't need to take but Corsair's white LL120 fans look absolutely stunning and I just had to get as many as possible into this case. So first off we will go ahead and remove the door for more access. This is done by simply removing the screw at the top of the hinge and this allows you to pull it upwards and remove it. Now remove the rear fan by undoing these four screws. For the front fans we first have to remove the built in RGB controllers on the case as I will be utilising the Commander Pro instead so only do this if you plan to buy one. First off go ahead and unplug all the RGB fans from the controller then simply pull it away from the case, it's only stuck in place with some 3M so don't be scared to go ahead and give it a good pull and then just follow the exact same procedure for the controller underneath. Now to remove the front fans we have to go ahead and take the bracket off by removing these two thumb screws. Simply undo them and pull the bracket away from the case. To get the fans off first we have to remove the magnetic dust filter, put it to one side and this will give you access to all the screws needed. And when you undo them all, simply lift the bracket up and put your fans somewhere safe. Now we can go ahead and lay out our three white LL fans like so. Make sure you do it exactly like I have to ensure all the wires are in the correct position. When we have this in place, simply put the bracket back on top and just go ahead and screw them all back into place the way that the black fans were. When you have finished this, just put the dust filter back in place. Then go ahead and return it to the case the exact same way you removed it and tighten up your thumb screws to hold it in place. Now we can go ahead and install our two bottom fans. Lay the case on its side and simply remove the bottom dust filter by pulling it upwards. Then make sure you have your fans the correct way around, just to ensure that the wires are at the back of the case for easy routing and simply screw them down into place. When you have done this, simply go ahead and replace the dust filter again. Now we can go ahead and install the last case fan on the rear. This is just a simple replacement for the one that you have taken off and requires 4 screws. Now it's time to go ahead and install the motherboard. On this motherboard the IO shield is pre-installed so no need to actually go ahead and install it in the case. So if you look in the box of accessories that did arrive with the case, it's a small brown box, you will see these screws. This is what we utilise to tighten the board down. So when you are ready, place the motherboard down into the case and make sure everything is lined up and then screw it down. Just make sure that you do this in a crisscross pattern so not to over tighten or flex the board. Now it's time to go ahead and install our Corsair H100i RGB Platinum. I have already made a full video detailing how to go ahead and install this so I will keep this section of the tutorial brief and leave that video linked down below if you want to go ahead and check it out. So in the box you will find this backplate. On the back side we have some 3M that keeps it in place so go ahead and peel that off and put it in place like so. Now take the standoff that you see here and screw them into place making sure they are hand tight. Now go ahead and grab the cooler so we can get it all set up and ready for the install. First off we will install the fans and to do this you need these long screws. 
Place your fans on top of the cooler just like you see here and again ensure the layout is the same with the wires at the rear, then simply screw the fans into place, just make sure not to over tighten them. To install the radiator, we remove the bracket from the top of the case the same way we did with the front fan install and screw it down into place. We can then install the extra dust filter that comes with the case like so, or you could do it beforehand as that would be much easier, and then simply tighten the thumb screws back up. Now we go ahead and install the pump head. As you can see, it does come pre-applied with thermal paste, which I'll leave on for this, but do feel free to change it if you wish. All we do is simply place it on the standoffs and use these thumb screws to tighten it down. Again, I like to go ahead and use a crisscross pattern, and when you have it hand tight, simply get a screwdriver and give them a little extra turn. Next up, we plug the USB cable that comes with the pump into the side of the head, then just feed the wire into the back of the case and we will fix the rest later. Now it's time to go ahead and install the power supply and I'm utilising the Corsair RM850X. While it does come with nice white braided cables, in this build I will be utilising the Corsair Pro PSU cable kit that arrives with cable combs pre-applied and in my opinion it does look a little better. You can of course save some money and just buy some cable combs direct from Corsair, then just install them yourself, these look pretty good as well. So go ahead and put all the cables you are going to need into the power supply, then to install it we simply put it in place like so and utilise the four included screws to secure it down. This case also has a little bracket that further steadies things up, so remove this screw that you see here. Then go ahead and slide the bracket down into place and re-secure it. Okay, so now onto the fun part and that is of course connecting everything up. It's a bit of a tedious job but if we just take our time we will get through it with no trouble at all. Just as a side note, I am also using Corsair's extension cables for the front I.O. and I will be utilising their white SATA cables as well. They are white braided ones and I just think they will look great. Obviously, you don't have to do this but all the links will be in the description in case you want to try them out. Ok, so first of all you're going to want to grab this adapter to make life easier, you will find this in your motherboard box, then simply grab the corresponding cables and attach them to the adapter. When you have them all set up, simply plug it into the front panel port on the motherboard located here. For the HD audio cable, we go ahead and attach it to the pins located here, just make sure you take the time to look at the layout, then simply go ahead and push it into place. Now onto the front panel USB 3. It has this little notch, so just make sure that you line this up with the USB 3 port on the motherboard located here and push it into place. Now we go ahead and give the motherboard some power by connecting this cable like so. Just make sure it is in place nice and snug as it does take a little pressure to go down. Next we are going to give the CPU some power, so go ahead and grab those cables that are clearly labelled from your power supply. I have used the 8 pin and the 4 pin but do feel free to just utilise the 8 pin if you're not going to be heavy overclocking it. Now connect up the front panel USB-C port by plugging it in here. Ok so now it's time to go ahead and plug some other items in. So grab that USB cable that is coming off the H100i and plug it into the USB port on the motherboard down the bottom like so. So to get the RGB working on the H100i, grab these wires here and simply join them together. Then we can go ahead and grab the fan cables and attach them to the connectors numbered 1 and 2. And last of all, give it some power by connecting the SATA cable up to the SATA slot on your power supply like so. Ok, so now it's time to go ahead and install our Commander Pro. The first thing we have to do is grab the RGB hub from one of our boxes of fans, or even utilise the included one with the case, and connect it up to the LED slot on the Commander Pro. Now we go ahead and connect the USB and SATA ports from the Commander Pro and hub, just go ahead and utilise a USB port on the front of the motherboard like we did earlier. Then we can go ahead and plug all the fan connectors into the Commander Pro like you see here. Then when you're finished, connect all the RGB cables from the fans to the hub and place them all inside the rear of the case and there are some included 3M pads if you wish to stick them down and that's pretty much our RGB controllers all set up. Now we can go ahead and install our hard drives. SSDs simply slide into the caddies like so and if you're using a mechanical drive, just use the trays below and slot them in. When in place, connect a SATA power cable from the power supply and then you can connect a SATA cable up. As I mentioned earlier, I'm using the white braided Corsair ones. Connect one end to the SSD and the other end to the motherboard like so and do the same for every drive that you're going to be utilising. The last job we have now is to connect our graphics card. This case does give you two options. You can have it in the standard way 
or opt to hang it vertically. For the standard option, remove these two brackets, then open up the card slot by pushing down on the tab. You can now slide the card into place firmly, then secure it with the two screws that you removed earlier. The second option is to purchase the Corsair Premium PCIe riser kit. Then take this end that you see here and plug it into the mobile just like you would with the graphics card. The other end just connects to the card itself. To mount it, you have to remove this plastic piece here by removing the thumb screw, then simply remove the two brackets. We then slot the card in place, ensuring it's in these two grooves, and then screw it down into place with the screws that you removed. Then go ahead and reattach the bracket and you are good to go. Now all that's left to do is give the card some power using the PCIe cables from the power supply. Now that all the hard work is done, we can go ahead and plug it in. Hit that power button and hopefully you will be greeted with loads of lovely RGB lights and it should boot into the BIOS. If all is well, shut it down, tidy up all your wires and peel off the plastic from the glass which I feel is probably the best part. Okay so now that you have your gaming PC all built, you will of course have to install Windows and the drivers for the motherboard and graphics card. I will leave a video down below that you can go ahead and follow that on. It's really simple though. You basically have to download Windows, put it on a USB drive, install it, then go to the websites for your motherboard, graphics card, etc. and install the drivers. You should have no trouble at all. So that pretty much rounds it up, guys. If you have followed this video or any of my videos to build a gaming PC, please send me a picture of it on Twitter. I would really love to know what you guys have achieved. As always, thank you so much for tuning in. If you have any further questions, just let me know down below. I will definitely get back to you and help you as much as possible. So stay safe, be kind to each other, and I will catch you on the next one. Peace.